Today we're going to talk about how to make a glued wrist corsage. We're going to be creating something that looks just like this. This is a great example of a wrist corsage that somebody may wear to a dance, perhaps prom, or maybe at a wedding. One of the first steps in creating a wrist corsage is to select your wristlet. There's a lot of variety in wristlets or bracelets available today on the market. You can go very fancy with beaded, you can make one out of wire, or very commonly used is the elastic banded wristlet on the right side of the screen. These are fairly inexpensive and uh, quite comfortable. We will be working with Oasis Floral Adhesive today. This is a cold glue. I'm going to give you some hints and tips as to how to use this product. One of the first things I like to do when I'm working with cold glue is I like to pour it out um, and let a little bit sit for just a few minutes. I just poured out about a quarter size dollop there on a 3x5 note card. I like to use the note card because you can throw it away when you're done um, and adhesive does not come off things very well, um, tools or tabletops. So again, the 3x5 note card is perfect. It tends to be quite liquid as it comes out. So letting it sit for a second will help it to gum up a little bit and it makes holding your elements in place that much easier. When you are working with cold glue, it is really important to store it properly. Otherwise, a tube such as this that can run six to seven dollars will be junk if it glues itself shut. I like to store it upright in a vase or a small jar and I like to put a corsage pin in the tip of it that helps prevent air from getting into it and it's easily removed when you're ready to use it. Here you see that I have used a QE stick. A QE stick is really just a, a small wooden stick. I like to apply the adhesive using the, the QE stick. Again, it's a disposable element that I'm not worried about trying to clean adhesive back off when I'm done with my project. One of the first steps is then to apply some adhesive onto your corsage base or your wristlet. Um, we're going to start by building a base. There is a fine line as to not enough glue applied or too much glue. It takes a little bit of practice to figure that out. Here's just another example of how much glue I used on this corsage. The next step is going to be creating the base to which you're going to glue your elements to. We like to start with a chenille stem. That's the fancy name for a pipe cleaner. Um, coil one end of it and then the other end to form a spiraled figure eight. Then take that spiraled figure eight and press it into your adhesive. You'll probably end up with a little adhesive on your fingers here. Um, give it just a minute for it to fully attach to the base. The next step is going to be to cover that chenille stem with some corsage leaves. I like to use fake leaves or silk leaves. Um, the nice thing about this is you can create corsages weeks in advance before you actually apply the fresh flowers that can save you a lot of time. Notice that the corsage leaves do have a metal or wire stem. We don't need that stem, so use a pair of wire cutters, not scissors, to snip that off. And then I like to just dip the end of the corsage leaf into the glue. As you can see, I've got a fair bit of glue on the back. And then I'll go ahead and start applying it to my chenille stem. Again, this is all building the base to adhere your flowers to. I continue to add corsage leaves. If you notice, I've pretty well covered that chenille stem on the right side with the corsage leaves. This is good mechanics. We don't want to see the elements that we have used to create this design. I will continue adding corsage leaves. I like to use about four green leaves and then add two fancier leaves. Everybody's going to create these just a little bit differently and you can also control the size of your corsage based upon your customer. If you were working with a five or six year old child, you'd probably find a way to make this using only four leaves. If you are working with a larger person, um, they may want even more leaves on there to create an even larger design. It all depends, again, on what your customer wants. There's a lot of availability in fancy corsage leaves. We often use gold, silver, and black. I don't like to use 
all gold, silver, or black because these do tend to be a little bit more expensive than the green leaves. But again, it all depends upon what you're trying to create. So here is my base. Um, before I start adding some additional elements. The next step is going to be to add a bow. Um, choose a ribbon that you're comfortable working with and that's going to fit the color scheme of your design. Here's a great stack of different color ribbons. Many of these ribbons also have different textures. Um, some are wired and some are not. Making a bow is a lesson for another day, but here's a, a small bow that I'll then attach to the corsage base. I stuck the bow in glue. I like to dip it right in there and then attach it to the base. As you can see, I've also added another element. I put in um, a wired pearl, um, just another, another thing to add a little bit of fancy sparkle to it. You can add this in before you add your flowers or after you add your flowers. It all depends upon what you want to do. I like to put it in before because it helps give me some more places to glue flowers. Next, I had to select the flowers that I was going to use for my corsage. Today, I'm going to use some white spray roses and some really deep purple caspia or sea lavender. I don't like to just set my flowers on the table. Flowers don't do well when they're out of water for too long. So I like to have a small vase to keep my flowers in while I'm working. Selected my first flower and cut the stem at an angle. Notice my stem length is shorter than an inch. It's not too terribly long. Also, I removed the um, protective petals around the outside. They had a little bit of damage on them, and I just didn't like the way they looked. I also wanted to make that rose just a little bit smaller in this corsage. So I like to just take the flower and dip it right in the glue, and then stick it into the corsage. One of the challenges I see... Um, inexperienced people do when they're making corsages is they tend to make the corsage flat. They don't get three dimensions. So notice that the bow is puffed right up and then I'll actually glue in the flowers um, at different angles to give that corsage the height and the dimension or depth to really make it look nice. So I continue to add some more flowers in there. I also decided that I was going to put some caspia in there. So I took a small bit of caspia, dipped that right into the glue, and then added that into the corsage as well. I added several small chunks of the caspia, gives it some nice texture and a nice pop of color. To finish off the design, I like to use Crowning Glory. It's a floral wax. The floral wax helps to provide a seal around the flowers and prevents them from losing too much water. Remember, these roses don't have any water source. So anything we can do to help preserve the life of the flowers is a bonus. Give it a little spray. And then just a, a fun little step is to add a little uh, glitter spray. Um, glitter spray does tend to be pricey, um, and some kids like to overuse it. But uh, just a little pop of uh, gold glitter to add just another sparkle to it. And here is the finished product.